Hello everyone and welcome to a tutorial video for tree rerouting TP. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you what kind of problems require this, what it is and how to go about solving it and the standard methodology for implementation. But before we go, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay notified and I can have my ego checked. All right then. So I'm going to be explaining this concept using this problem and after that I'm also going to solve a recent problem from this contest. This contest actually had these two problems, uh, these two, which no, not these two, these two, which were solvable using tree rerouting. So in division three, you could have been pretty much rank two, three. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Let me open that. Hmm. So what is this problem? In this problem, we are given a tree like this and we are asked to select a vertex. So basically, you know, we root at that vertex and then what we have to calculate is this sum. So let's say this vertex is two, dis two units away from the selected vertex, right? This is the selected vertex. Let's call it root. Okay. So the distance is two. So add to the sum its value, which is one times the distance. Okay. For this, it would be distance, sorry, uh, value is four multiplied by distance. For this, it would be 10 times one and, and so on and keep adding them and you will get this value, right? So now what we are asked is of all the possible routings or selection of this vertex as our source vertex or whatever the terminology is here, what we have to calculate is the maximum the maximum possible sum we can get. So in this problem, as you can see, uh, if you think about it for a second, what you will be able to notice is that if we were asked to find this value only for one root, okay, let's say we can root at specific at five or one or four or whatever, and then we have to calculate it, then you can calculate this value, but we have to find it over all these possible vertex routing right so for one you can calculate in on okay we'll discuss how to do that but uh, let's say you have figured this out okay beat on or on log n but something that you can do right but if you were to do this for every vertex it would become n square which was which would really because n is this much right so this is where rerouting comes in so here as you can see we had a problem which we can solve if we were to root at a specific vertex. Now we have to solve the same problem, but with vertex, but with a different vertex rooted. So that we can solve using rerouting DP. And uh, here we were asked to calculate the maximum, right? We, right? How we are calculating the maximum? We are going through every possible routing, getting the sum in that case, and then taking the maximum out of it. So we, they could have also asked us the minimum or the sum over all the possible routings and so on, like anything like that. As long as uh, just calculating all the total values for routing for different vertices, as long as that is enough to get the answer, we can get it. And how we are going to get it in less than n square is the rerouting DP. So yeah, this is the general problem structure that we encounter when we know that we might need to reroute our tree. And uh, what exactly happens here is, uh, let's say we have this tree, right? And what we do is, we first of all calculate the DP. DP will represent our answer, whatever it is, okay? So um, by answer, I do not mean the maximum. I just want the value when this uh, vertex is rooted, okay? So let's say we calculate uh, DP one. Okay. The value when one was the root. Now what we will do is we will shift the root and uh, then calculate what will be value DP two. Now calculating DP one was ON, right? Yeah. That took ON time. And uh, if we were to do it normally, uh, then this would also take O n time and then for every all the n it would take O n square but here's where the dp comes in we have 
pre-calculated a lot of stuff, right, already. So what we can do is, what we can do is, we can use the previous result that we had here to calculate what will be the result for db2. So when we move it, as you can see, uh, so also uh, in the first iteration, when we were calculating db1, we actually calculate something like, uh, so that value, we also calculate what it would be for its subtrees, okay? So for example, whatever value we calculated here, right, we also calculated for this subtree, and this subtree and this subtree, right? That's how we calculate normally on trees. So after we did that, okay, after we did that, what we had was the uh, the answer. By answer, I mean the value, okay, for this subtree, that is just this much. For this subtree, this subtree, this subtree, this subtree, this subtree, this subtree, and then the entire tree, which is also a subtree in a sense, right? So what is this? Uh, okay. So now what we have the answer, so let's say we, I'm, I'm going to call it, uh, you know, sub answer S A. Okay. So we had the sub answer for this. We had the sub answer for this, 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 and this, and S A one was equal to D P one. Now you can see that when we change the root, okay, when we change the root from one to two, uh, what happens, it becomes like this. And as you can see, the sub answer for 5 and 6 remains the same, for 4 and 3 remain the same, right? It only changed for 1 and 2. For what happened in 1 was that this sub answer was removed. And uh, what happened for 2 was this sub answer was added. So, yeah. What happens in rerouting is the sub answer for the new node, the new root would uh, be increased by this much. Uh, I want a different color. Okay. By this much. Okay. I'm messing it up. Uh, undo. Yeah. By this much. And uh, for the previous one, it reduces by this much. Okay. So. This was the general idea for rerouting. Now let's erase everything and uh, see for now. I, I was trying to explain it in more generic way right now. Now let's move into this problem again. So for this problem, let's first of all see how we can do it. Okay. Uh, no, undo black. Okay. So we had this one. Two, three, six. Okay. Now, what are we going to do? So, let's calculate. So, we have to initially to calculate the DP1 value, right? DP is the final answer when DP is the actual answer when 1 is this root, right? Or U is the root, whatever DP U is. And SA is our sub answer sub answer represent that in the initial routing right in the initial routing let's say i uh, let's say u right let's say this is u then what will be the answer for this this sub -tree? okay so let's say we had sub answer for this and sub answer for this okay now what we want to do is calculate sub answer for one which will be the same as dp1 so what is the sub answer for one in this case? In this case, you can see that uh, whatever will be the, so uh, for this subtree, what was in the answer? In the answer, it was five times one plus six times one plus four times zero, right? And when this subtree is visited from this uh, node as the starting point, all these get added once again, right? Five gets added once again, six and four, because they become five times two, six times two, and four times one. So if you subtract this from this, you will get uh, five plus six plus four, which is just the cumulative sum of all the values in the subtree. So, and this happens for every subtree of the current node. 
so what we can say is that uh, deep uh, sorry sub answer right the sub answer of u sub answer of u is equals to for all of its children v sum for all of its children v whatever the sub answer was right plus the cumulative sum of that node of that subtree so using this we can calculate what is the answer if the root was 1 it is not the maximum but it is what this value would be if only rooting was at 1 okay now what we want to do is we want to calculate uh, what would be what would be the answer when uh, and also as so we keep doing this recursively and when and then sa1 becomes equals to dp1 now what we want to do is we want to calculate dp2 dp3 dp4 dpn right how do we calculate this so we first of all uh, like i said right if i have the answer for this the dp for this i can calculate dp for this and this because rerouting here only changes to three values which is about o1 right so the order of operations for in this dp if you don't know what order of operation is basically like you know you have these uh, dp ij usually many times and then you iterate i1 to n and then j1 to m and then calculate ij sometimes you have to iterate over j first and then i right so yeah that is the order of operation you first iterate through i and then j in this case however so i can actually remove this no one cares in this case however uh, let's remove this as well in this case however we can see that from dp u okay let's say this is v1 v2 we can calculate v1 and v2 only its children so the order of operation or evaluation is the same as dfs order so now uh, we had the answer for u now let's say we reroute re at v1 okay so what happens dp v1 what will it become so obviously whatever was uh, the value whatever was the sub answer here right whatever was the sub answer here that much would remain same right because 3 would still contribute that much 2 will still contribute that much which is 1 and 0 and uh, but the contribution of uh, this subtree will get added right sorry uh, this one mm. yeah so this this part of the tree will get added so how do we calculate it first of all let's uh, update now i'm saying we are updating this value but we won't actually update it in the code reason being we'll have to reroute uh, v2 again when when we visit v2 after all this stuff right so we don't actually want to update it but just for this rerouting what happens is first of all dp uh, u gets changed so how does u get changed from u we just remove whatever the sub answer was here right sub answer of v1 uh, so yeah uh, dp wait 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 i got this yeah so minus equals to sub answer of v1 minus cumulative sum of v1 this you know this is exactly what we added initially but this time we are subtracting it sorry okay so we will do this and now the dpu is correct right because now this is the actual root so the tree some looks something like uh the tree looks something like two three one four five six initially this also had a part of solution sorry a contribution from this much but now we remove that now we remove that so after removing that we 
have the correct value for this as well okay so this is correct let's also upgrade the cumulative sum right uh, the cumulative sum for u also get subtracted sorry v1 also get subtracted from u now now that this is done all we have to do is to the dp v1 we add so initially we had done we had added this right but now there is a new subtree right this when we made this the root this became a subtree so we just do what we previously did subtree which was u plus cumulative sum of u sorry dp okay so yeah this is how we are updating it so let's have a look at the code and see what this actually is so we take the input right and we are in the adjacency list we have the graph so now let's uh, discuss how we you know usually do the pre uh, sorry do the implementation for rerouting so to implement we usually do two dfs in the first dfs we calculate dp1 along with all the sub answers and any other value we need like cumulative sum or whatever okay and then in another dfs we calculate the dp2 to n okay so here i have a few things so this is the graph a is just the values that uh, you know we are given in this place and uh, answer is this the final answer now i have only two things here but i use three things there uh, reason is because uh, so cost is just the dp and sum is just the cumulative sum because we don't need you know sub answer and dp at the same time we what we can do is just override sub answer with our actual dp values so first so i usually name it like pre calculation and dfs this dfs calculates the final dp values and this pre calculation calculates it for only the first one and in this case the dp values only represent for the subtree so dp v or cost v in this only represent okay only represent only represent for subtree v when one is root okay but after doing this dfs cost v would represent sub uh, cost v would represent such that v was the root so let's see what we are doing here so what is the sum sum is the cumulative sum of all the nodes in the subtree so the current node also counts in the subtree and uh, i'm doing the normal dfs because it is a tree we don't need a visited array we can just check if our current you know the current vertex i'm visiting was not the previous one where i came from then i can just continue this happens because it there is no back edge now uh, we pre calculate for the uh, you know small the subtree with v and u v the current vertex and u the previous and uh, what we do is we say sum u plus equals to sum v now what this means is uh, obviously as you can see the sum of this includes this node right au plus av1 plus sorry with plus sum v1 plus sum v2 right so yeah this is that and uh, cost here represents the sub answer right uh, so cost is sum v plus cost v sum v plus cost v so now our pre calculation is done and cost 1 represent the actual value for one however for other values it only represent for the subtree when one was the root okay so pre calculation is done now we do the dfs now in dfs uh whenever we visit a node we know that this node's cost has been updated to be the actual cost so we just check that answer equals to maximum answer cost u and then uh we do the normal dfs thing and now here we update the cost of the next vertex and then we dfs now the reason is the reason i'm doing it like this instead of you know calculating it somewhere here is because 
cost one is already calculated right since cost one is already calculated we will do it in do it first of all update it update it from the parent side only so now we are doing the same thing so new cost represent the new cost for the vertex u when subtree is rooted at v instead of u so as you can see we subtract uh, cost v uh, cost v and uh, some v so sa or you know dp so cost v minus some v so this is the new cost of our subtree which is this something like this and then we add to our uh, new subtree's cost so new subtree's cost uh, becomes new cost plus some u minus some v so what's happening here uh, so the cost of this is equals to whatever was the cost of this right uh, plus so we are doing plus equals right so whatever this one this much was this is already calculated right in the previous loop in the previous dfs which was pre cal now we just had to have to add this much which is the same thing right some u minus some v so basically this is the same thing as a new cost right plus new sum new acu new cumulative sum and new cumulative sum is some u minus some v right as you can see and then some v becomes some u because now since this is the root uh its sum is equals to the sum of this because the these values gets added here so i mean essentially we you could have also done something like sum of uh, v1 plus equals to our sum of u but i uh, sum of u when sum was some of you was updated but we are not updating it here as you can see i'm not updating anything related to you and the reason is because in the next next time i will check for you know this vertex i want these values to be original only then i can do the rerouting right so that's why i you know temporarily upgrade the values i could have also done like integer new cost and new cost for the old you know old root would be this much right we subtract it as you can see this subtree gets subtracted out and then we could have done here which is same thing a uh, new cost plus new sum let me just do like new sum okay and now the sum becomes sum u or you know it is basically sum v plus equals to new sum new represents the new cost or sum of our previous root and we are doing this temporarily for implementation sake and then we just dfs next time and then we upgrade again so yeah we can run it and it works obviously i submitted it yesterday i think yeah and it worked so it, it was it wasn't that difficult if you know how rerouting works and what is the main idea behind it you know if you just know like what is the main you know way of thinking the direction of thinking for rerouting you can actually figure it out on the spot like many people have done in past i have also like somewhat figured it out but uh, my method was pretty pretty weird but now i do it in a more standard way where i first pre calculate everything and then i do a dfs updating everything i think this has actually helped me a lot for you know tougher rerouting problems so yeah now uh, i hope it was understandable okay so do implement this because implementation will make you better at this and uh, i'll leave a link to this problem in this video description so that you can practice it on your own you can also check my solution if you want i will leave this as well in the description to take reference because you might not know how this you know you, you might forget that's all right and uh, as you can see i'm using global variables here and that is a bad practice but heck if i care i made a whole video on it 
on why I use bad practices and which one I use. Global variables I usually don't prefer that much, but because there's only one test case, I just went with it. Now, uh, now in this, you know, in this contest code Senso, it recently happened. It was by Triple IT Allahabad. These two problems, they both, I mean, not their uh, rerouting wasn't their only solution, but you could have solved both of them using rerouting. And uh, I will discuss one of these and I'll leave uh, one of these for you to practice uh, because I think uh, this problem is pretty good for practice. I will discuss this one though. So this problem, ah, this is just such a stupid formulation of the, I don't know, just a forced, forced formulation of problem statement. Let's read this, okay. So what we have to do is, uh, for, yeah. So what we do is, let's say we are given a tree, arrays, okay. So let's say we are given a tree like this, okay. What we can do is, we can delete one node from here. Let's say we delete this, then, we get two sub, we get two trees, right? One this and one this. What we want to do is, uh, sorry, no, this is wrong. Uh, so if, if, if I remove here, right, I get three sub trees. One is this, one is this and one is this. Same as the degree of this vertex, right? So what I want to, Calculate is the GCD of all the numbers. They are also given some value, right? AI, AI, AI. So I want to calculate the GCD of all these values for every subtree and then add them. So let's say this was a two, two, four, six. So GCD becomes two. It was, let's say seven GCD becomes seven. It was three, nine GCD becomes three. And then I add all of them and I get 12. So what I want to do is I want to tell that uh, what will be the maximum value of this considering we can we remove only one vertex so you know we can remove any of this vertex and see what would be the actual value so this is also a rerouting problem and uh, i mean also has a rerouting solution this can also be done using euler tools plus segment trees euler tools is a topic for another video if you want me to make leave a comment in the comment section i guess i'll make it and uh, yeah so how do i approach this problem so in this problem again we'll follow the same steps okay first of all can i solve it if i you know first of all you ask yourself this question right can i solve it if this was if i had to only you know delete a set specific vertex let's say one can i solve it let's see Let's say I calculate the cumulative GCD for every word subtree, right? When this was the root. Then, 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 so let's say this was G1, this was G2, you know, GCD of all the vertex in this subtree and then in this subtree. This is getting pretty messy. So, and then I just add them and I can calculate it easy peasy. Now, all we have to see is how will I do the rerouting now? So let's uh, go ahead and do some rerouting. <laughs> Remove everything. Okay. So now I want to do the rerouting. How will I do it? So let's say I reroute from, you know, I make this the root. So it becomes like two. Eight, I don't know what I have written here. Seven, six, I guess. One, three, four, and five. Okay. So here, as you can see, the cumulative GCD of this becomes for for from that I have to re remove this GCD somehow. Now, G for GCD, it's not that easy, you know. Just remove the sum. So that's one challenging part. But if I do that, right, if I do that, 
I can get and also I have to uh, remove the cumulative you know I have to first of all remove the GCD from here the cumulative GCD right let's call that CG and then the actual you know DP value that I calculated so if I remove it from uh, this of this vertex then you know this one this much was already done and I've recalculated this much so I think it is fine and we can do it right but the, the only problem is how do I calculate what will be the GCD uh, what will be the GCD okay control set hmm so what will be the GCD of this much subtree we want to calculate the GCD of this subtree how do I calculate it when I have the GCD of this entire tree right okay uh, and this subtree and this subtree right so to do this how do I go about it is you might be what you might be asking and uh, it is pretty simple okay so let's write let's write down the gcds okay this is g1 g2 let's say there were uh, other subtrees right t1 t2 and their gcd were g3 g4 right so let's write them down g1 g2 g3 g4 okay now the GCD of this subtree, right, that I have marked in yellow, is the GCD of all these along with A1, right? But but that was here. Now, in this case, I want to remove G1 or sometimes G2 or sometimes G3 or G4, right? So, as you can see here, I have this array, right? And uh, when I want to sub root at this, uh, two then I want to find the GCD of all this much when I'm at G2 I want to find when I'm rooting at 3 I want to find the GCD of this much when I'm at T1 I want to find GCD of this and when I'm at G4 32 I want to find GCD of this so that's pretty simple it's just prefix and suffix GCD right so let's go into the code and see how I did it. Okay, so as you can see, I've done the same thing pre-calculation and, uh, and uh, you know, our DFS. So I'm taking the, you know, value, what is this, adjacency, sorry, N, then making the graph, getting value a and then I'm making this G value G represents the cumulative GCD I guess yeah so in the pre-calculation as you can see cumulative GCD equals to AU and then normal DFS for tree then pre-calculate for the next subtree and then GCDU equals to GCD GCDU GCDV okay now what I'm doing in DFS in DFS first of all I'm enumerating all the previous GCDs, right? All these GCDs. No, no, sorry. Uh, previous GCD is something else. Uh, so, here as you can see, here as you can see that, uh, hmm, how do I explain that? Uh, so, hmm, so, when I rooted, when I root, at 2 right so when I root at 2 this becomes the GCD and now let's say I was rooting at 8 okay when I'm rooting at 8 I'm doing this this same you know this same thing with uh, with rerouting but 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 there's a problem uh, the cumulative GCD here is not exactly what we want because you know we want the entire gcd to be here so thing is i only used one array here right 
GCD. I could have added another DP and then I wouldn't have to keep track of this previous GCD value, but I did it anyways. So yeah. So then again, what I'm doing is I'm storing all the GCDs in this CG current GCD and then calculating the prefix and suffix for that. And uh, then, you know, the previous GCD becomes previous GCD with the previous node because you know, we were also taking this value in my current, in my CG array, I'm only taking this much. So, and because I have to take GCD with this every time, I'm just doing it here and then iterating through everything and uh, uh, taking, if you know, if I can take prefix, take prefix, if I can take suffix, take suffix, then DFS again, and I'm keeping track of the position I'm at using I. And every time what I do is again, uh, I calculate the answer. So answer is really just, you know, so I had the cumulative GCD till here, till here. So what I did was, uh, the answer was the sum of all these cumulative GCDs. And, uh, yeah, that is it. And then I just pre-calculate DFS and print the answer. I did not dive deeper into why, how previous GCD is being used. The reason being, do not do it like that. Prefer using two arrays, one for whatever, you know, the, uh, you know, value you are calculating for the subtree and one for the final value that is DP. Okay. This, I don't, I don't know. I also do not prefer to do that, but no one's brain is working during contest. So yeah, this value, this problem, this problem is also a DP problem. Sorry, a DP rerouting problem, but I won't be telling the solution here. And uh, what I would, what I would say though, is here you will face this problem that the product is getting too big. Okay. When you will read it, you will understand what I'm saying. So take a moment to read it and then unpause the video. And uh, now you will, you know, you, you'll face this problem that the product is getting too big and uh, you cannot store it in an integer due to which, you know, your simple, neat, nice algorithm is getting messed up. So for that, I have just the thing for you. I created this, uh, you know, this structure, you can use this to, uh, this, what this would store is the number of twos you have and, uh, it's sign. Is it positive or negative? And, uh, instead of multiplication, you do plus it's basically, you know, storing the logarithmic value and also with the sign. And it also has less than operator defined and uh, a constructor. You can form it from an X using this. You can do your normal thing pre-calculate and treat it just like a number and instead of multiply, I do plus. So yeah, if you're interested, I won't be telling the solution because editorial is there and also spoilers are not fun. So yeah, there are actually a lot more solutions for uh, a lot more problems with rerouting and uh, some problems which do not require rerouting but can be solved with rerouting. So you can practice them. I think there was this bandit problem in code forces. Yeah, this is also a rerouting problem. I think I'm not sure. Let me check. Yeah. So this is the time when I didn't actually, no, 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 this is not a rerouting problem. Eh, whatever. Or maybe it is, who knows? It, sometimes it can be solved in one DFS. You can try to do that as well, because let's be real. You are free. You don't have anything better to do. So yeah, once again, please subscribe. That really fills up my ego and it is good for my health. Obviously <laughs> I'm kidding on obviously, but yeah, please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.